Hey everybody, it's Joshua Gaiman with joshuagaiman.com. If you haven't had a chance, go to this website real quick, and then you can go right here, click follow, and that'll subscribe you to the blog so you'll get all the updates. We talk about financial education, money, as you can see here, business investing, real estate, etc. I want to talk about quantitative easing today, specifically QE3. This is really big. Bear with me, and I'll bring it all together. If you want to know what QE3 is, you can watch this video on the blog, or just go to Google or YouTube, type in QE3 Explained. It's a five-minute video that will explain how quantitative easing works. Basically, the way it works, the United States, when they need money, they sell debt. And what that's known as is a bond. Bond is the same thing as debt. So the United States sells a bond or debt, and investors buy it. So cash goes back to the United States. And the reason that they buy the bond or the debt is because that they think that the United States is a good economy and is going to be able to pay them back the money plus interest. What happens is when those investors stop buying the debt or those bonds because they don't think that the United States is a good bet anymore, then the Federal Reserve, which is the United States Bank, come, or the Bank of the United States, it's not owned by the United States, it's private, but it's the bank that issues money to the United States, comes in and they buy the bonds so that the dollars can still go to the United States. When they do this, it's kind of like they're buying... It's kind of like really they're canceling out the debt. But if they canceled out the debt to us, if they just canceled out what we owe them, then everybody would lose faith in the dollar and the currency could crash. So instead they do this nifty thing where they just buy bonds with money they print out of thin air to keep the economy going that's inflated by the money that they create out of thin air. So that, in a nutshell, that's what QE is and different... Governments do it, uh, they do it with different things to get money to fund what they need need, to, need fund. This one is they're going to invest in mortgage-backed securities, which I think is interesting because that was the last bubble that popped back in 2008 when people couldn't afford the minimum payments on their debt with houses. But they're going to try to get the economy going apparently by getting mortgages going again. So they're going to pump money back into the economy by buying mortgage-backed securities, which means... Loans are going to be able to be issued again, packaged together, and the, the, the bank or the Federal Reserve will be the end buyer of that debt, which is who people owe the money to in the first place. So like I said, it's kind of silly. This one, a lot of people have dubbed it QE Infinity because unlike the first two quantitative easings, this one doesn't have a specific end date. They're, they're going to do it as long as it takes. The release on September 13th when they announced QE3 uh, also stated that they may undertake additional asset purchases for as long as it takes. Now there's four factors I've looked at when I've thought about when or why they might do quantitative easing. The stock market, government bonds, inflation or deflation, and the rise, in, in, rise or fall in the employment rate. So let's look at each one of those quickly here. The stock market hasn't really significantly improved in recent months, hasn't really crashed either. Government bonds, have, yields have not risen, meaning investors buying bonds have not seen a greater return than before. Returns still suck for those investors. We haven't seen deflation, but we haven't seen inflation either, and I'll get into in a minute why, because those two things go hand in hand, and it's really important to understand what's going on right now. And the last thing is the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate hasn't gotten any better. So because of these things going on, they had to do QE3 right now and again in a minute I'm going to get into why I think they needed to do it right now this is Joshua Gaiman on joshuagaiman.com so a lot of people have been saying uh, we're talking about quantitative easing and what QE3 is it was just announced by the Federal Reserve and how we can benefit from all of this and uh, as a side note from that a lot of people have been saying that maybe QE3 was announced now to help Obama win the election coming up here in a couple months in November well, I don't think that's uh, that's cur that, that that's true. Uh, I don't blame people for guessing that that might have you know having a hunch that that could have something to do with it because there is a lot of conspiracy and whatnot out there. But I think that if they wanted to do it to help Obama's odds at winning the election, they would have done it sooner because it takes a couple of months to see the effects from quantitative easing from when that money was created 
So we're probably going to start seeing the effects right after the election, which wouldn't, you know, really be a benefit for either candidate. So I, th I think the reason the, the Federal Reserve is doing QE3 right now is because the Federal Reserve is afraid. And uh, this is a global problem that's going on right now. It's not the United States alone. But the, Econ the United States economy did suck in the second quarter, and the third quarter is supposed to be worse, but they don't have those final figures yet. The UK is in a recession. The European Union is in a crisis. Japan, is cra their economy is crashing from less exports because of the tsunami. Uh, plus, they're on like QE20 over there. I mean, it's ridiculous. They've been doing uh, instigating these measures for a long time and similar types of stimulus for a long time to keep their economy from totally imploding. China's exports are drastically slowing. A lot of people are saying that those have crashed. Um... Bank of Japan just announced QE in September, $126 billion stimulus package. And the biggest player of all is Bank of England. Uh, they're buying 30% of all UK government debt with newly created money. So this quantitative easing, this economic uh, tool that banks can use to manipulate their currency, since that's the only product they have, is nothing new. I mean, it's been going on. And the European Central Bank said that they will do whatever it takes, which means printing euros, to hold down Spanish and Italian bonds so that the European Union doesn't deteriorate. So what's going on is Spain and Italy are, are screwed right now. Pretty much unemployment's through the roof. They can't pay back their bonds to other countries. But the EU needs to keep them together because if, if countries start falling out of the EU, then the EU doesn't drops in value, which is bad for the central bankers that create the euro. So why, how long will all of this work, this creating money by central banks? Um, so to get into that, and this is, I'm going to kind of wrap everything up right here. Inflation, which is caused by more, more money, because the more money you have in supply and circulation, the less each dollar's worth, because it's chasing the same amount of goods or services that were already there. But that inflation from that, all this quantitative easing, is being offset by deflation, which is being caused by globalization of labor jobs right now. Let me break that down and make it a little simpler. Because of globalization, which means we have people or we can um, send jobs overseas and get th get more work done for less cost, that is causing deflation in the job market. We can get a whole lot more done for a cheaper price. So it's like the currency is stronger there. You can get more for your dollar in terms of labor because of being able to have employees in other countries, virtual assistants or people in and or have manufacturing plants offshore, whatever it is. So more money in supply, less cost for labor. Those are two huge things that have kind of offset each other. So we haven't seen a lot of inflation or deflation. At some point though, because they keep having to pump in money, we'll see a lot more inflation. This can't last because of what I'm going to tell you in a minute. This is Joshua Gaiman with joshuagaiman.com. Stay tuned. We're talking about quantitative easing, QE3, what's going on right now, how it affects everything. So I want to illustrate the global economy right now and what's going on so that I can make my final point of why QE3 uh, won't, won't last for very long. Basically, let's think about the global economy like, like a raft with all of the asset classes in the raft and all of the people in the world in the raft. The raft is filled with credit, not with air, and there's a small hole in the raft. The central bankers have a pump and are trying to pump air into the raft as fast as they can, but because of that hole, it's just kind of maintaining its air supply or its credit supply. So what's happening 
is they're creating more and more money. The people on the raft can't afford the minimum debt anymore, so they're just pumping more money into it so that it can be paid to keep the music playing. Well, eventually, that raft is going to sink or it's going to fly away. The, it cannot sustain floating because income of the people in the raft worldwide is not enough to cover their minimum debt. So either the global, the, the, the central bankers are either going to be really, really nice and just start canceling out our debt, which I've already said why they probably can't do that, or they're going to be really, really nice and, or I'm sorry, they're going to be not as nice and they're going to start making demands. I don't know what that could mean. That's, that's, you know, you decide for yourself what you think may or may not happen if central bankers start making demands on governments and on people, but it doesn't sound like a good thing to me. So as the dollar collapses and all currencies, other currencies will collapse around the dollar because they're all tied together, together and have been since the end of World War II, we could see a, a global economy or a global currency. I'm sorry, we're already in a global economy, but we may see a global currency, in my honest opinion, to offset gold. Central bankers don't want us going back to gold, barter, or anything like that. They want to be able to issue currency out of nothing so that they can enslave us in debt and be richer and have more power. So that's it. This is Joshua Gaiman with joshuagaiman.com. We were talking about quantitative easing. Um, on the website, make sure you subscribe. You can go to the YouTube page, HighGross14. That's H-I-G-H-G-R-O-S-S-1-4. And watch all my videos on there. Please comment, please subscribe, please like, and please share them on your social media accounts, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Thanks. We're going to talk to you soon.